Thank you. Take care. Now back to Senator McCain and the taxes. And today he ignored the advice of W.C. Fields, never work with animals or children, at a Nevada town hall this morning deflecting criticism that he had flip-flopped on his pledge to not raise taxes. Cue the senator cueing the kid. I'd like to ask one of our oldest members here to attendees. If you are president, will you raise our taxes? <laughs> no. <laughs> Oddly enough, the same kid is in the Daisy commercial. But when Senator McCain spoke with reporters on his campaign bus earlier this month, on the 9th of this month, he did not rule out a tax increase for funding Social Security. Over the weekend, in an interview with George Stephanopoulos, he returned to the idea of a payroll tax increase to buttress Social Security. I will say that everything has to be on the table if we're going to reach a bipartisan agreement. I've been in bipartisan negotiations before. I know how you reach a conclusion. We all have to sit down together with everything so on the table. So that means payroll tax increases are on the table as well? Uh, there is nothing that's off the table. I have my positions and I'll articulate them, but nothing's off the table. Moving back even further, they, having been a reversal from the stance, Senator McCain outlined in an interview with the National Review magazine in March of last year, the question was if you could get the Democrats to agree or at least to come to the table on entitlements or on tax simplification, are those circumstances under which you'd be willing to accept a tax increase? Senator McCain, no, no. Question, no circumstances? Senator McCain, no, none, none. Let's turn now to CNBC's chief Washington correspondent, John Harwood, also, of course, political writer of the New York Times. Good evening, John. Hey, Keith. He won't raise taxes, but everything, including the payroll tax increases, on the table uh, for Social Security reform. Is this a flip-flop, or is this a flip-flop flip? I'd prefer the simple flip-flop. Okay. Look, uh, I think just like uh, for Barack Obama, the calendar has turned. He's not in the phase of the uh, uh, primary campaign when he was trying to uh, impress conservatives, the base of his party. He's got to now try to make a different argument against Barack Obama, somebody who's also trying to reach across the aisle, appeal to independence, and that's what he's doing here. But it's problematic, as uh, those quotes that you uh, played just indicated. Senator McCain's spokesman, uh, Tucker Bounds, uh, told Fox News this morning that the senator had not really been speaking for the campaign when he told Stephanopoulos that a tax increase was on the table. I I'm, I'm reluctant to close this competition out for this race, but that's the <laughs> damnedest thing I've heard yet. How is that possible that the candidate is not speaking for his own campaign? Actually, Keith, it's not possible. I don't know what Tucker is talking about. It is, however, possible that the campaign does not speak for John McCain. This is the challenge of John McCain for all the people working for him. This is a freewheeling candidate, more so than almost anybody we've seen run for national office. He's going to do what he wants to do. They all know it, and they got to brace themselves because sometimes they get these unexpected moments. Moments. I'm sure his campaign was not anticipating that response to George Stephanopoulos. But, it, but if that is actually going to be a response at any point from a campaign, does that not have catastrophe written all over it? Or is there some? Or, or, or am I not being sufficiently uh, suspicious of this? Is this just going to buttress the idea that he is the, the so-called uh, uh, maverick on everything? Well, he's trying to do straight talk express, and he's trying to preserve a little nuance, that, as you saw in that answer to George. What he's saying is, my position is I'm against a tax increase, but as a uh, bipartisan, somebody who's willing to engage in conversation with the other side, I'm not willing to take it off the table. The problem, of course, is that quote you showed from the National Review showed he was quite definitive at taking it off the table when he was running for the Republican nomination. And obviously today he did it again with, with uh, the little girl in the, in, in the audience in the back. Well, he was being nice to a little girl, I think. Don't oh, you, you think, think that's the explanation for that? He, uh, he just know, gave her the microphone and she, she recited that question She was too cute. You couldn't nicely. say, you, you, you could disappoint a face like that. Um, there was a Washington uh, anti tax group, the Club for Growth, which hammered McCain after that interview with George Stephanopoulos, called his statement that nothing is off the table shocking because of his adamancy in opposing uh, raising taxes under any circumstances. Uh, you suggest here that maybe he didn't want to make the little girl cry. I I'm suggesting here maybe he heard that quote from the from the Club for Growth, which is more likely. Oh, yeah, he heard it, Keith. Don't, don't, no uh, question about it. Look, John, John McCain's got lot, so many problems in this campaign. He's got a conservative base that doesn't trust him, hence they rush out a statement like that. Much 
much stronger than you heard from liberals about Barack Obama when he shifted, say, on terror surveillance with that FISA bill or even on campaign finance reform. John McCain is distrusted by his base. He's trying to reach out to the middle. Barack Obama has the advantage going into the general election of a base that's solidly behind him and giving him a lot of running room to do what he wants. John Harwood of CNBC and the New York Times. Thanks much, John. My pleasure. The candidate does not speak for the campaign.